This video will introduce the basic knowledge of the electrochemical method, and will focus on optically transparent electrode series part 1. The introduction of optical transparent electrode will be divided in two parts. In the first part, the requirements for optically transparent electrode, followed by tin oxide and indium oxide, and platinum and gold film optically transparent electrode will be introduced. The optically transparent electrode used in spectroelectrochemistry needs to meet the requirements of both spectral and electrical properties. The ideal optically transparent electrode should have good light transmittance and low resistance. In fact, there are not many materials that meet these two conditions, and the compromise method is generally adopted. Following, several types of optically transparent electrode will be introduced. First, let's talk about tin oxide. Tin oxide is an excellent transparent conductive material. It is the first transparent conductive material put into commercial use, and it has a tetragonal rutile structure. To facilitate observation, the structure is marked with a yellow line to mark the square rutile structure part. After taking out this structure, its structure can be clearly seen. As shown in the picture, red is oxygen and black is tin. Tin oxide is composed of two tin and four oxygen atoms. The central atom of tetravalent tin is surrounded by an octahedron of six oxygen atoms. The pure tin oxide film has polycrystalline properties, and its conductivity is due to crystal defects, that is, electrons provided by oxygen vacancies and doped impurities. Doped tin oxide is more usually made by adding antimony atoms, as the tetravalent tin in the tin oxide lattice is replaced by trivalent antimony, the density of n-type carriers increases by more than 1020 carriers per centimeter square and the surface resistance is less than 150 hm per square. These tin oxide films can act as completely inert and chemically stable surfaces in electrochemical research. Tin oxide and its doping have a tetragonal rutile structure. The typical spectrum of n-type tin oxide coating on the optically transparent substrate is shown in figure 2-1. At 360 nanometer on the glass substrate, the sharp attenuation of the light transmittance is due to the absorption of the glass itself, such as zinc oxide coating on the quartz plate can extend the direction of the optical window to the wavelength of 300 nanometer. Therefore, the tin oxide optically transparent electrode is only suitable for the study of the visible light wavelength range. Let's take a look at the comparison of the current potential curve of platinum, gold, tin oxide, and indium oxide electrodes in one mole per liter sulfuric acid medium. The current potential curve of each electrode in the figure can be divided into three main regions, namely, the double layer zone 1, the hydrogen evolution zone 2, and the oxide zone 3. For platinum and gold electrodes, these zones have been extensively studied. The potential width of the above-mentioned zone 1 changes with the potential sweep speed. The most obvious difference between the two metal film electrodes is that the potential of the gold electrode zone 1 is wider. There is no hydrogen adsorption on the electrode surface. For these two electrodes, if the negative reduction potential is maintained in the hydrogen evolution zone for a period of time, the metal film on the substrate will be irreversibly damaged. For the monotonic change of the charge on the tin oxide and indium oxide electrodes in the entire zone 1, because the electrode is already an oxide, usually the highest oxidation valence state of the metal, there is no significant Faraday current due to oxide formation as the potential increases in the positive direction. The potential width of zone 1 is up to 1.5 volts. These oxide films are bounded in the positive potential direction, zone 3 line, by precipitated oxygen, and in the negative potential direction by the boundary zone 2 line by the lower valence state of the oxide reduced to the metal oxide, hydrogen precipitation, or surface reduction to the metal state, so that similar to on metal electrodes, delayed electrolysis at very negative potentials will produce irreversible and deleterious changes. As seen in Figure 2-2, the tin oxide and indium oxide electrodes have a wider potential window for redox reactions than the platinum or gold electrodes. However, carrier depletion will occur at potentials corrected by the flat band, 
so that the rate of any Faraday transfer at very positive potentials is limited by the charge transfer process of the semiconductor film, and the tunneling effect may be the primary mechanism of electron transfer at low doping contents. In the case of high doping content, other factors including the composition of the surface oxide may be the main factor influencing the electron transfer. It can be seen from the figure that the hydrogenation zone 2 on the metal film electrode is replaced by two line to two two lines on the semiconductor electrode, the difference between zone 1 and 2 line is the small Faraday current that may be involved in the surface electrode reaction, the magnitude of the current is related to the partial reduction of the surface of the tin oxide electrode, the current is observed only in the deoxygenated solution and is increased in the alkaline solution, the potential passes through zone 2 line to produce the irreversible reduction of the semiconductor. Due to the presence of some surface degradation as shown by the dissolution of the coating, the zinc oxide coated electrode is not suitable for studies in solutions with high alkaline pH, and the behavior of the indium oxide electrode is similar to that of tin oxide. Next, let's talk about indium oxide optically transparent electrodes. Indium oxide is an important n-type semiconductor. There are two main structures. Its stable structure is cubic ferromanganese type, and its metastable stable phase is hexagonal corundum type. Usually, we study the schematic diagram of the unit cell structure of indium oxide crystal with 80 atoms in the cubic ferromanganese type diagram. Theoretically, pure indium oxide film has high resistance and is almost non-conductive. When impurities are doped in the crystal, it will have weak conductivity. In general, doping can effectively adjust and change its performance. Doping tin, molybdenum, antimony, and other elements can obtain N-type indium oxide film materials with better electrical properties, which can significantly increase the conductivity of indium oxide films and improve the performance of the film. Conductive Properties At present, the most researched ITO films are mainly indium tin oxide films with excellent comprehensive performance, such as transparency, electrical conductivity, fine processing and chemical stability. Indium tin oxide films are widely used as transparent electrodes in optoelectronic devices, including liquid crystal displays, plasma display panels and solar cells. Although the ITO film shows transparency and conductivity at high room temperature, its conductivity will be severely damaged at high temperature. In practice, when the ITO film is exposed to high temperatures above 300 degrees Celsius, its electrical properties will be affected. The resistance has increased more than three times. Figure 2-3 shows the light transmittance comparison between the ITO electrode on the quartz substrate and the 0.5 mm and 1 mm quartz substrate. The light transmittance of the quartz substrate decreases slightly as its thickness increases. It can be seen that the ITO on the quartz substrate transmits light in the visible light range, and light in the ultraviolet range cannot pass. It is difficult to measure the absorption spectrum in the ultraviolet region. Figure 2-4 shows the comparison of the absorption spectra of the ITO electrode on the glass base substrate and the glass substrate. The two are almost the same, indicating that the ITO film has good light transmission properties. We provide customers with ITO electrodes of various substrate sizes. Indium tin oxide electrodes are commonly used for spectroelectrochemical measurements. ITO electrodes can transmit visible light but not ultraviolet light. The thickness of the ITO film is 100 plus slash 10 nanometers, and its resistivity is 15 plus slash 1.5 ohm per square. The main disadvantages of the above-mentioned metal oxide electrodes are the poor reproducibility and high resistance of the electrodes, and they are only suitable for research in the visible light range. They are later replaced by vacuum deposition of thin film of platinum and gold, less than 5000 angstrom, which can be made by reasonable preparation. These films have good mechanical stability, low electrical resistance and reasonable light transmittance. The procedure of the gold film mold is as follows. 1. Strictly clean the surface of the optically transparent substrate, such as glass or quartz 
then ion bombardment of the substrate surface under vacuum to ensure good adhesion of the metal film on the substrate. 2. On the substrate pre-coated with bismuth and lead, deposit gold in high vacuum, and control the thickness of the film by controlling the deposition time. 3. Control the temperature annealing to change the conductivity and light transmittance of the film. The deposition of platinum films is similar, except that platinum can be applied directly onto the substrate. The platinum film is mechanically stable. When the film is oxidized or polarized for a few seconds at the potential of hydrogen evolution, or when mercury is electrochemically reduced to the surface of the platinum film, the platinum metal is easily detached from the substrate, but through normal cleaning, heated in concentrated nitric acid for a few seconds, immersed in hydrochloric acid for 12 hours or in contact with metallic mercury, but will not fall off the electrode surface. The gold film with similar impedance has higher light transmittance than platinum film in the visible light range. Since gold has lower adhesion on the substrate than platinum, a layer of oxide metal oxide is deposited on the substrate in advance. For example, the bismuth oxide substrate has better mechanical stability and lower impedance while changing the light transmittance. Attempts have also been made to reduce the impedance of the platinum film by using a substrate method but the film prepared in this way is similar to non-transparent, especially with higher impedance. This impermeability may be due to the difference in refractive index between platinum and metal oxide. The gold film is also not easy to fall off, unless it is brushed, immersed in hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, or polarized as early as at particularly positive and negative potentials. The resistance of these films can be reduced by about 10% to 30% by annealing in a muffle furnace. This artificial aging process may cause the discontinuous metal islands on the surface of the substrate to condense into a more continuous metal film, which reduces the resistance and improves mechanical adhesion and light transmittance, especially in the case of gold films. Figure 2.5 shows the effect of annealing time on platinum film. It can be seen that the impedance decreases sharply at the beginning and reaches a normal value after one hour. In most cases, the impedance decreased about 55% to 66%, and the transmittance of the film with the annealing time and gradually decrease. For the gold films on bismuth or lead oxide and ground in figure 2-6, the impedance and absorbance both decrease with annealing time. Figure 2-7 shows the absorption spectra of various films. The absorbance of platinum film in the wavelength range of 250 to 800 nanometers is approximately linear, while the absorption spectrum of gold film has a minimum at a wavelength of about 550 to 650 nanometers. When these metal films are deposited on a quartz substrate, the resulting optically transparent electrode can be used in the study of the ultraviolet region. Except that the overpotential of hydrogen ion discharge on the platinum thin film electrode is slightly lower than that of the bulk platinum electrode, the electrochemical properties of the gold thin film electrode are very similar to the bulk electrode. This concludes the first part of the optically transparent electrode's introduction. In the second part, we will continue with optically transparent electrodes, introducing the mercury platinum and carbon film, metal grid, porous glassy carbon and metal, and gold and platinum gauze electrodes.